Hello everybody, this is David, uh, Fairly Secret Music. Um, today I wanted to do an unboxing. Uh, I did an order through Wayside, and I've been ordering from Wayside for about 11 years. Uh, about 10 years prior to that, uh, I worked at a record store. We used to get stuff for the store directly for, from Wayside. Um, and I've ordered kind of on and off through those years um, leading up to like 2007 is when I started ordering s relatively consistent from Wayside. I mean, you know, at least twice a year, um, which is, I guess, not all that much, but they, they do have a lot of specialized music. Uh, a lot of different versions or genres or subgenres of prog rock, uh, jazz, fusion, um, you, you know, a, a lot of interesting stuff on Wayside. They're wayside.com, waysidemusic.com. Uh, they always have really reasonable shipping. Um, they are super fast. I ordered um, this box on... Sunday night or Saturday night last week and it shipped Monday and I got it Friday so five days for what I'm assuming was media mail I'm not sure but the shipping was only ah uh, geez like um, 475 or something like that so the first thing I ordered three things uh, first thing is Vandergraaff Generators uh, Do Not Disturb. Uh, this came out in 2016 from Esoteric Records, and um, I just, for some reason, didn't get it. And lately I've been listening to a lot of Vandergraaff. I'm listening to the Peter Hamill uh, discography in chronological order. I'm about halfway through, and I'm getting to the point where it's a little bit in the early 80s, like 84 or something like that. Um, and it's getting, it, it's been good, but it's getting really interesting for me. Uh, so that's why I got this. I've listened to this once. It's pretty mellow in spots, but... Vandergraaff Generator are always just a band that continually impresses me, and I'm always interested in what they're going to come up with next. This is the two CD and DVD uh, release of Peter Hamill Live in Berlin. And this was originally released as... Um, uh, what was it called? Live in Passion Skirchi, Berlin, 97, 1997. And it is Peter Hamill live on keyboards and guitar, just solo singing with either he plays keyboard or guitar. Uh, this has one of my favorite versions of his song, Patience. And the booklet comes with some liner notes. Um, and it does have the DVD, CD, and CD of the same show. Apparently they screwed up when they made this, uh, and there's a track listing that's weird or something. I haven't, I haven't put it in yet. Uh, I also want to show you on the Vandergraaff generator, this comes with lyrics no liner notes with this one because it's just a new studio album. Uh, the only studio album that had liner notes when it came out new was uh, Present when they when they got um, when Vandergraaff got together for the first time in like what thirty years or something crazy like that. Other thing I got was Magma's Emete Ray. I am not sure if I am pronouncing that. This comes with a super sweet uh, slip case. I'll let you see that artwork. Uh, also, it 
these are pretty minimal, but uh, this one actually comes with them doing all of uh, KA, which is uh, Contarcos Etern Eter Eteria, Contarcos and Emetre. I'm I'm not pronouncing that correctly. And it has uh, two or th it has a three interviews, I believe, with it. And by the way, uh, their packaging is really good. They send them in these cool boxes. Uh, this had a bunch of packing material in it. I've never had a problem with any of my packages coming uh, damaged from Wayside or any of the items being damaged. Um, one of the first things I ever bought from Wayside and luckily I was on an email list and I still am and it will tell you every time they have something come out but this this is one of my prized possessions it is a 10 album 12 CD set of all the Magma Studio stuff. I wish I would have gotten two of these because I would have sold one to a friend of mine who missed out. Uh, sad story about this is the guy who uh, got me into this, his name was Brandon, into, into Magma, and it took me um, close to eight to 10 years to really, really jump in head first. I mean, Prog, prog Rock is a slippery slope. One day you're listening to King Crimson, the next day you have a full-blown magma addiction. Uh, he died, um, my friend who, who got me into magma, he died uh, three days after I received this. And um, I never was able to talk to him really about it. So... Um, yeah, it's, I'm going to move, I'm going to move on from that sad portion of the story. Uh, each of these discs came with a removable booklet and each of the booklets has, uh, all the liner notes and information both in English and in French. And previous to this, all you could do is get like a, a liner note booklet that had maybe it would fold open and tell you the name of the songs and what was in it. And every one of their studio albums is in here. And then it has all their archives, volume one and two. Um, that... I ordered in 2007, I believe. No, 2008. And uh, this, this monstrosity, this came out in uh, 2015. This is a box set of all their live albums. My wife purchased this for me and you know it's love when your wife sits through a Magma DVD and then thanks you. Granted, that was early on in our relationship. Now I asked her if she wanted to watch the new Magma, and she said, not in a million years. So I told her that was either true love or she was just trying to get in my pants. Um, this... Holy crap, this has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 CDs. This one also comes with a super awesome booklet. Just ginormous. It, a lot of pictures, some liner notes. Um, luckily, what little liner notes they have are also done in English. Um, they're in French and English. Uh, if you don't know anything about Magma, they basically started in 1968 and they started out as more jazzy and then they created this sound 
um, well, the, uh, even on the first album, I believe they were calling it Zool. And uh, they created their own language, and it's it's a lot of chanting, a lot of repetition, but just really good if you can invest the time into uh, getting into it. Um, it's It's amazing. They also recently announced that they were coming out with a new CD called Zess, and the drummer, who is also the vocalist on that track, he said that Zess would be their final release. So, I mean, it has been 50 years since the band started, so uh, I can understand if they wanted to to kind of wrap things up. Uh, I'm going to just zoom through other things. This is one of the newer ones. A lot of these titles, I can't even... Felicit Thos. And as I said, I believe this is all in um, Kabayan, which is their made-up language. These are some of the more new ones. I don't know if you can even see that. Slog tons. Um, I'm actually missing one that I've been going to sleep listening to. Um, but this one, Baba Yaga, this actually came with this. This is a youth choir covering their, probably one of their most popular uh, pieces, which is called MDK, which is mechanic destructive commando another project that the the drummer christian vander also did was offering and this is mainly like piano um there might be some other instruments i can't remember piano maybe bass and a lot of chanting um a lot of vocals uh he also did this a few years ago i don't know wow you can't even see that christian vander's uh, Jean Coltrane, uh, Le Homme Supreme, which I am assuming is something about Love Supreme. Uh, this has quite a bit of lyrics going on. Where is it? Uh, it's been a while since I listened to this. It does have some liner notes, but they are all in French. Also, this box set has, the offering box set, has a booklet and comes with four discs. A um, lot of just photos. Not much of liner notes, actually, absolutely zero liner notes in that, which is kind of disappointing, but, I mean, to get all the offering stuff in one package is pretty cool. Now, uh, Wayside Music also has, um, oops. Wayside Music also has a label called Cuneiform Records. And I'm going to just go through some things that uh, I think are some of their highlight releases. A newer band that is touring right now. This is called Bent Knee. Uh, I don't know if... Boop, boop, boop. Bent Knee. Uh, this is the only one that they released on Cuneiform, but this is probably my favorite. It starts out with Black Tar Water and Leak Water. If you get a chance to see these guys live, um, do so, because they are entertaining. I saw King Crimson with all three drummers about a month before I saw these guys, and their drummer was more exciting to watch than three drummers in King Crimson. Uh, Happy Family. This is also considered Zool. 
Uh, I think they might have an album before this one. This one was their what I consider their first one, and then this one. I've yet to get their newest one. Um, I would have got it with my other stuff that I got, but I kind of had a limit of how much I could spend. Uh, they are all instrumental, keyboards, bass, drums, and guitar. Um, this is intense, crazy instrumental stuff. Um, Volapuk. This is a band with, let me uh, check here. What is the lineup? Clarinets, drums, and cello. Um, and the drummer and the, or the, all three people play um, different instruments also, but those are their main instruments. And this is really awesome. It's kind of in that vein of Universe Zero, but more of a stripped down, kind of happier version. This is one that I actually didn't buy from Wayside, but I they are I got it used. Um, Thinking Plague. Uh, this band I should probably have more stuff by them, um, but every time I'm ready to buy stuff from them, I decide to get something different. They have a an album. Um, Oh, I think there's a song called Werewolf on it. Um, I'm sorry, it's it, uh, slipping my brain, but uh, that is the album that I really do want. It's either I decide against it or I can't afford to get it that time with other things that I'm ordering. Uh, this is a band which has the guitarist and sometimes the drummer... Um, and from, uh, Universe Zero, uh, I believe this is their first album, because this had all Universe Zero players, whereas this one just has, uh, a couple besides Roger Trigo, Tr I think, T-R-I-G-A-U-X. Uh, he plays guitar and Fender Rhodes piano. Uh, he was the, one of the original members of Universe Zero. Uh, I believe I call him present because one time when my friend Brandon was ordering for us on Wayside, uh, he said, I, I think he called the order in and he said present and somebody corrected him and said it was present. So I kind of like the the fact that it's called Present. Uh, I love this this cover. And these are the remastered versions that were redone in 2014. Uh, they also did a... This isn't on Cuneiform, but I have to talk about it because they do a live version of um, Jack the Ripper. It's live on the CD and on the DVD that comes with this. Uh, it doesn't come with any kind of booklet, whereas these two, uh, this one, nice picture of the band, uh, lots of liner notes, lots of liner notes on, on these cuneiform re-releases. There's a couple others that I'm going to show you that are just fantastic, and I'll show you the difference between the original version and the um the new versions let me grab that here so this is the band that without cuneiform records without wayside without steve i don't think i would have ever heard and that would have been absolutely bullshit because for a long time, they were just the band for me. I would listen to their stuff night and day. Uh, Universe Zero, they're a band from Belgium. Uh, they originally started with Roger on guitar, uh, a guy named Emmanuel Nice on a harmonium and spinet, uh, Patrick. Hannah Peer on violin, viola, pocket cello, Christian 
Jeanette on bass, Marcel Dufresne on violin, uh, Dufresne, party of five, Dufresne, um, Daniel Dennis on drums, and Michael Breckmans on bassoon. And this, I've actually made copies of this. Look at that lineup. Oh, that's fantastic. Look at those symbols. They're just ginormous. So this is all you get with the original version. It is instrumental. So you don't really need lyrics or whatever for an instrumental album. But, so this Universal Zero 1313, the reason it was 1313 is because I believe that was the original label number that was going to be on there. This is the remastered edition that they did in 2008. And this was all remixed and mastered by Dieter de Roos in uh, Belgium. And look at how many guys are in that band. That's fantastic. Um, so, oh, look at that mustache. Oh, it's so great. They, this band is what would happen if Bartok and Straczynski got together and decided they wanted to start a rock band. Uh, <laughs> that's the best description I've ever heard. Lots of liner notes, lots of information. This is actually the, the exactly why I buy CDs still. Uh, their second album, which... This was all the, that's all that came in the original. I love this cover. This cover is fantastic. I don't know if you can see it, but that's the bass player sitting in a wheelchair and he didn't need a wheelchair. They just thought it looked really creepy. And uh, this actually has three songs on it. Um, this was a more stripped down version. It has Michael Breckman's on oboe and bassoon. Daniel Dennis is still on drums. Uh, Patrick is still on violin and viola. Guy Seegers, um, or Seegers, is the guy in... He replaced the original bass player. Well, actually, the original bass player replaced him before they recorded an album. And then, when he left, he came back. Uh, Roger Trejot is still on guitar, piano, organ, harmonium. Um... The first song, La Faults, I can't pronounce other languages, I'm awful. Uh, that is about 22 minutes, no, 25 minutes. And it does have some of the scariest vocals and stuff on there. I listen to black metal and, I, you know, it's, it's creepy to me. Um, this, uh, my friend Brandon also said it was probably one of the scariest albums Besides, uh, his other scary album was listening to um, Slayer, um, Rain and Blood, the first time. The second song on here is Jack the Ripper, and Jack the Ripper is 13 minutes. And then the last, album, or last song, which has a really long title, not in English, that I cannot even pronounce, uh, is 1251. The second and the third song on here are two of Universe Zero's finest songs. Um, in 2010, they remixed and remastered it. Same guy. Uh, I know the bass player said he doesn't like the mix so much. Um, or at least, I believe, doesn't like the mix so much. Um, you still get the same picture. Uh, here's the new old cover. I'm not sure. Uh, a lot of these reissues or different versions of Universe Zero stuff have had alternate covers and stuff. Um, this comes with a lot of liner notes also. And you get to see kind of exactly what they... They're standing in somebody's backyard, and it had just rained, and 
there are, oh, there we go. You can see they're just sitting in their garden and it just rained, so it was muddy. And I thought, that's a great reason for a photo shoot, a great place for a photo shoot. So yeah, uh, Universe Zero, just, I used to live and breathe Universe Zero around 2007 or something like that. So, uh, I'll swing through some of the stuff. They they keep doing awesome stuff. This has two of my favorite uh, songs. Uh, one is called Dense, D-E-N-S-E. And that is just fantastic. It has uh, a violence or a... What? Michael Breckman's plays a lot of instruments on this one that's let's see oboe english horn bassoon on the same track um andy kirk got in the band at this time guys guy is still on bass um i believe at this point uh roger trujillo is gone yeah so not much guitar at all on this. Honestly, they didn't have a lot of guitar to begin with. Um, this album also is kind of like awesome period. I really wish they would have remixed both of these um, or actually all three of these. This is kind of like the last hurrah before they broke up. And up until um, all of this, you know, they were just on fire. They were so good. But they broke up in 86. Uh, the sad thing about this band is there was a lot of financial difficulties, um, which makes me never want to play live ever, um, especially touring type stuff. Um, man, I'm too old now. At least in my mind I am. Uh, this, they had a, a very extended lineup. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people on here. And I guess Michael uh, Delory, I guess he was a super shredder. And they tried to get him to do guitar solos. And he just refused. Um, which I think is funny. <laughs> uh, this was kind of like a later or a release that happened somewhere in those that um, that ended up being uh, like a 12 inch or a single or something like that. They finally released it on CD and it has six tracks. The first track is just fantastic. I love the name, The Crawling Wind. Um, so 86 was around the time they broke up. Um, this came out in 99. This was the hard quest and it is still a good universe zero album. It just, it changed a little bit too, not too much for me, but it changed a bit. Um, it had a lot less of that kind of, uh, chamber rock music ensemble um but still exciting because after years of them not being together this came out uh this came out a year after i kind of found out about them and i was also an, a reluctant listener of universe zero just like magma i back in the day i was such a picky son of a gun and uh i'm so glad i opened up my ears and my mind and 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 started listening to all this stuff um here's one that i actually one of the few ones that i've actually picked up used and um i've for the most part ordered or got them through the store from ordering from cuneiform uh from wayside uh, this is one of the ones that I missed getting and I accidentally found it used and I was like, Oh, cool. 
uh, they do a, a few, a couple live things. Um, this was with the more current group. These are somewhat out of order. Um, Rhythmics, I remember being really excited about this one because it had a bunch of people back in the band that hadn't been in there for a little bit. Um, oh, wait, no, Michael Breckman's... Maybe it was this one. Um... Yeah, Breckman's came back on this one. This was one of my favorite re-release type things. Um, it was called Relapse. And it was Universe Zero Archives from 84 to 86. And this is live with this amazing lineup. Look at that. They just, they kind of look kind of punky, kind of new wavy. Um, and this is between the Used album and the Heat Wave album. And I'm sorry if I forgot to say. So this one obviously is Heat Wave, and this one was obviously Used. Um, this also comes with a lot of liner notes. And... Unfortunately, there was a parting of ways with Universe Zero and Cuneiform, but without Cuneiform, without Wayside, I don't think I would have ever heard this band. Some other things that I have also discovered through Wayside, uh, probably the, the last band, well, One Shot, which is a band consisting of the... Uh, bass player, guitar player, keyboardist from Magma. Uh, the only person that wasn't in Magma is this drummer. He, this keyboardist has since been replaced because um, there was, I don't know, some controversy or something like that. Uh, Family. I don't know if anybody's listened to Family. This is a band whose singer kind of sounds like a billy goat. Especially if you listen to this album, uh, Family, what is this called? A Song for Me. Listen to the song Drowned in Wine. Uh, it, it's fantastic. I love it, but it is out there. Uh, Fearless, this actually had John Wenton on bass. Um, there are a couple family albums with John Wenton on bass. All of these I got because of Cuneiform. You know what? The other John Wenton, which is called Bandstand, I believe is upstairs um, in my bag. Vandergraaff Generator. These are just things that I've, I've purchased from Wayside. Uh, Christian Vander Interviews. Um... This, I believe, is him playing. I don't know, it's like 59 minutes. Uh, this is them playing the whole Thuwiz Hamtak uh, trilogy, which I believe they've only done it maybe once other than that. Um, it might be on any one of these Magma DVDs. I have five of them. Now I have six just great stuff. Um, the last and final band that I discovered through Wayside was Anecdoten. Anecdoten are a band that started as a King Crimson cover band, and they uh, kind of morphed. They had a cello player who now mainly just plays keyboards. This one sounds quite a bit like King Crimson. This one is a little bit more aggressive. They did uh, two live albums. My lighting here is kind of shit. What is going on? Um, they did a couple live albums. These were on Jazz Desaric or something like that. And then they did 
this is where she kind of lets the cello go away to the wayside and this has a very big Mellotron sound. She just pretty much consists of Mellotron. And I believe up through to this one or this one, Gravity, is where the bass player kind of starts not singing quite as much and the guitarist starts singing. Um, wow, what is that? That's another live album. This is uh, Waking the Dead Live in Japan 2005. And then their last two is, um, what is this one called? A Time of Day. I love that cover. This band actually, I believe, shared a uh, practice space with Anecdoten. They're both from the same country, um, which I believe is Sweden. I'm not 100% sure. And this is their newest one. So if you like King Crimson, you want something that's kind of dark, kind of... Uh, kind of awesome. There you go. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.